Hello everybody, my name is Gary Yao and today I would like to give you a little short explanation or comparison between stocks, real estate as venues for investment. So let's jump right into it. Let's say for example that you have $120,000 of capital seed and you're deciding which is the best venue to invest. Well, three best venues to invest is one, start business, second, buy real estate, or third, through stocks. Let's focus on those two first. Okay, so let's say that you have $130,000 across the board and you decide to buy $130,000 of stocks, a real estate, or real estate rental. This is your own house. Let's say you want to buy a house just to live in, okay? Initial investment value, well, for stocks, you have $120,000 worth of well, cash, or cash, you can only buy $120,000 worth of stock. No bank is going to lend you money to buy stocks. It just won't happen. However, when you have $120,000, you can use that as a 20% down payment to buy property, and banks will give you that in the form of a mortgage. So $120,000 will give you control of $600,000 property. Same as here. You're going to buy a rental property that's going to be $600,000. Got it? Good. The growth rate. Growth rate here, uh, well, for stocks, historically has been going up for about 9.2% year after year. Every year has been 9.2% approximately since it has started. Now, 9.2% doesn't count or doesn't take in consideration the taxes that you will be paying for your, for your gains, which is taxed at the highest level. As if it were some uh, as if it was income tax, yes. Plus, you still have to pay for the management fee. For the fund managers, are going to take care of that investment for you. So nine point two percent minus all these fees and, and taxes, you will be netting about five to six percent. Let's say, for example, for the argument's sake, that you're netting ten percent and you will be getting eight percent net after that. Yes. So growth rate. For uh, investment properties, investment property has been going up for um, nine. Uh, for here in LA, it's for seven point two percent, and in some cities, it's been about ten percent. <coughs> let's just land it out in favor of stock, and let's say that you make five percent growth rate. Okay, for residential real estate going up or going down, <coughs> growth rate for rental five percent also. Okay. So it's 5% because we don't want to average it out. Good. Housing expenses. Well, since you have stocks, you still need a place to live. So you're paying rent. Let's say they're paying rent $3,000. Yes? Housing expense, you have a mortgage. And your mortgage is going to be a little bit higher, $3,279. Okay? And so it's here. You have the same mortgage, $3,279. Because this is a rental. Well, because after you have residence, you, you can decide how a rental. Anyhow, so monthly housing uh, income. Since you're renting it, you have no income. Not for the property, but you're paying rent. Second, residence. Since you have your own house, you're not making any income for it. You're just living in it. You're only sitting time, so you make no income. So let's say that you know after you have a house, you decide to buy a rental, and your rentals give you income. Let's say that you're renting your rental property to the one who's having stocks, to the one who owns stocks, and you're making a cash rental, you're making $3,000. We're still a little lower than when you're paying mortgage, so you're losing about $279 in your first year. There's no cash flow, but we'll show you as we go along what's happening. Annual rent increase. Here in, the, uh, well, here in California, the rent increase has been 5.8%. In some cities, it's about 10. But let's say that you're only getting 4% rent increase. Yes? Because we want to be nice. We want to make sure that stocks are getting the most, uh, well, the most income. Or the most uh, growth. So real estate, uh, you know, rent increase, nothing. Because, again, you are not renting it out. And the last one is rent increase, 4%. Yes? Oh no, not four percent because you're not really renting. You're not renting, so it's zero. Let's have our results. 
results. Investment value after 30 years, let's say that you're using the formula principal, yes, one plus investment over RT to the NT. So for compounding formula, we're going to use this formula, okay, equals the amount after 30 years. So investment value after 30 years is going to be 1 million two hundred and seven thousand dollars by 19 okay this will make any fund manager proud and beating their chest saying that after 30 years with only hundred and twenty thousand dollars he was able to produce you and give you a net income of one hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars by 19 that is good great numbers not many can actually perform that but hey good for them right what happened to your property what happened to your house well let's say that after 30 years you haven't paid off right and you're going to sell it how much you'll be selling it for well it's a whopping 205 93 165 this is how much you can sell your house for after 30 years yes and so it's your rental property. Let's say they want to sell it out, cash it out. Two million five hundred ninety-three one sixty-five. Well, we still have to consider the expenses, though, right? So let's say that you've been renting for thirty years. You haven't owned a house. You only focus on your stocks, right? So how much do you pay in rent at three thousand dollars? Rent increase at four percent for the last thirty years. Well, that has been two million. Nineteen thousand dollars fifty-eight. This is what the stock owner has been paying in rent in the last thirty years. Mm -hmm. So, how much has been the resi uh, residential or the homeowner been paying for housing expenses? Let's say mortgage. It's one million one hundred eighty, one hundred eighty, four hundred seven. Okay. This, how is coming with this number? Is well, you've been paying uh, this mortgage by what? This mortgage by 30 years. Yes? And lastly, how much was the 30 year housing expense? It's been 1 million 126. Yes? And 408, 406. That's how much you'll be paying for the rental. Guy has been paying expenses. So 30 year housing income, how much was the income? For the stock owner and the homeowner, nothing. How much for the rental homeowner? Two million nineteen thousand fifty-eight. This is how much the rental investor has been collecting for the stock owner. See here? Good. So 30 years maintenance expense. The stockbroker, the stock owner didn't pay for any maintenance. For a homeowner, let's say $90,000 or let's say changing a roof every 10 years or so on changing things here and there. And for the real uh, real estate rental homeowner, 403812 because they say that he has a vacancy every year and they have to redo the whole house. We're going to subtract these numbers now. So we're going to subtract these two numbers. The investment value in 30 years and how much housing expense he was paying. And we'll get in, we'll get $811,539. The stock owner has been losing $811,539. $11,000 every year. For the homeowner, he is being netting $1,322,000.718.758. Yes? All he did was living in the house, doing nothing and just paying for the property and then sell it. Without the need of a fund manager to help him invest. Lastly, how about the property? Well, this is comes down to $3,000,000. 82,000, 82,005. So 
the one who owned the property, the investment property, was ahead all of this three. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is a very, very oversimplified explanation on what you know why real estate is more powerful. It has utility value and it has leverage value. With $120,000, they were able to leverage the, the, the amount that they can control. And with the rental, this person was able to leverage the utility value and get cash flow towards the later years. It is, and each person is separate. Each person has its own unique situation. They have different goals and different risk, uh, risk uh, capability in, in heart. So the best thing is, Check with your real estate professional, check around and ask if your real estate professional knows about the utility value of a property. It's not just about buying and just keeping. No, 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 no. You have to see the growth rate and you have to see what city. There's a lot of parameters. So if you have any questions, make sure that you ask around. This is Gary Yao and I'll talk to you soon.